So, right, three X in the last, you know, in the last, uh, you know, in the last year, phenomenal. But again, it's not what it did in the past. It's what it's saying it's about to do in the future. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody, and welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So crazy uh, market continues. Uh, the election is still on. Um, Trump is still fighting to the last day to... Uh, to kind of, you know, try to win this uh, election. Uh, big news, obviously, of the week that's pretty much set the tone uh, was Pfizer, right? 90% uh, effectiveness in their trials uh, or in their studies, whatever whatever you want to call it. Uh, really, really big move. And then obviously the scumbag thing to do uh, if you're the CEO is obviously make some sales, obviously. But that's a whole different story. Uh, but again, I, I think the key to what we're seeing right now uh, in the market is number one, we're trying to figure out or the market's trying to figure out how it's going to proceed to 2021 with COVID still here, which is obviously still getting aggressive. Um, we're trying to figure out how the economy is going to adapt by this new wave or this new age of life, just like every single, uh, every single day of life. And the problem with that is a lot of people are overthinking. They're, they're doing everything possible to try to self-sabotage themselves uh, into, the, into the new year. Now, right now, we are coming up on traditionally one of the most aggressive bullish uh, quarters, right? The end of the year, it's, it's the, the fourth quarter you have um, you had the Thanksgiving rally traditionally that comes up and then followed by the Santa Claus rally, uh, followed by the January effect. The only problem with all that is we got every single bit of that and more in the last two weeks of trading. And which basically, you know, comes to the theory of, well, what do we expect from the market, right? What do we expect from now uh, to the new year? Number one, you have COVID cases still surging, okay? How is the market going to adapt to that? Now, again, I think we got a little bit of a sign from it, uh, from the COVID plays, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, I think right now we're in a delicate balance of trying to figure out what happens next and traditionally what has happened. Now, again, you could turn around and make a case, especially in the queues, for example. Um, you could turn around and make a case and say, well, look, look, the market rested this week. The Q's had a tremendous run. Everything is setting up for a very, very bullish run into the fourth quarter. Uh, we've negated the, the election. That's kind of in the rearview mirror, even though it's not quite settled. Uh, the market is doing a phenomenal job of shaking off all this COVID news. And again, you see uh, Thursday and Friday, all these uh, rumors and chatters about possible school closures. Uh, you saw a headline uh, coming out, out of New York City, Mayor uh, de Blasio, which God knows how he made it through the second, uh, second term. Uh, but he's you know, basically telling parents, have an alternate plan uh, for your child come Monday morning. Well, hello, it's 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. When the hell are you gonna kind of give a little more clarity? Um, so you have a lot of things on the table and the most interesting part about what is happening with this COVID spike here is the names that benefited, okay, they're getting sold. And that's kind of something that I really want to pay attention for uh, for Monday. Matter of fact, I think majority of my game plan uh, is, is the COVID names uh, confirming back to the downside. And I want to give you guys kind of an example. So... Peloton, right, um, they had this announcement with a deal with Beyonce, right? It's a big announcement. You got a big name uh, attached to your product, uh, co-venture, everything's great, right? They had this rally, okay, they had this rally. Uh, you can see here, again, why we use the five and the 10 day moving averages is so very, very strong uh, areas of either, either uh, technical damage or rejection. Um, so you can see here where it got rejected and turned around. So the idea that, that the news came out with Beyonce, everything is great, shareholders loved it, they sold off the news. You can see it, they sold off the news uh, from the PR. The PR was here on the gap and they completely engulfed the PR. 
TDOC, okay, which was another really big beneficiary of the stay-at-home movement. It's the whole, you know, you can consult a physician online, right? Pretty cool. Stock got upgraded on Friday with a $220 price target, okay? Uh, COVID cases are spiking. Naturally, it seems like it's a perfect play to run. It got sold, right? You're getting a little bit of a, you're getting a little bit of theme here? Zoom, okay? Zoom is, there's no bigger beneficiary of this whole stay-at-home movement. We saw that. We continue to see that. You continue to see uh, the run uh, it had, you know, in, in the last three, four, eight months, right? Huge, huge run. School closures are closing down, right? People are staying home. Naturally, you would think that the market would embrace this and buy these shares and start really pressing higher price per share. Again, you would think so, but they got sold. So what is that telling me? Okay. I think basically the market speaks on price action. Okay. We always try to overthink things as traders. So for example, if you told me two months ago that, Hey, by the way, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, I'm just using random states would start closing down schools again. And by the way, my son's school, they already sent an email out uh, Friday around two o'clock. They're going virtual uh, towards the end of the year. Okay, that's already in New, in New Jersey. Uh, my daughter has been home this whole time. So they're starting to close. So if you told me on Friday that we were gonna get headlines that uh, school closures are going to be in effect probably till after the year because of this rising spike, you would imagine, right? You would absolutely imagine that these stocks would really explode, especially on Friday. Again, they did not do that. So the idea of reality versus market price action, you can see a big disconnect. And I think a lot of traders saw these, you know, this news of you know school closures and possible you know a lot of corporations are still uh, not letting their employees come in till like probably in the summertime. This was a natural home run. Go long, forget about it. Wake me up in the summertime. That did not happen. So price action is king. Our opinions mean absolutely nothing. And if you look at what happened on Thursday and Friday with these stay-at-home stocks they got sold. And again, that's the bottom line. Again, it's not the idea that Zoom is not a great company. I use Zoom. I love Zoom. Probably everybody uh, everybody knows somebody who uses Zoom right now. So it's not the idea that Zoom is not a great product. I love Zoom. I think it's fantastic. I have a Peloton at home. Again, used it five times in the last three years. But again, that's irrelevant. People love Peloton. Again, one of the biggest movers on this whole stay-at-home movement. DocuSign, right? Again, huge, huge moves, right? Look, look at the move DocuSign has had this year. Tremendous, just absolutely tremendous. The stock has gone, you know, three times, right? Three X in the last, you know, in the last, uh, you know, in the last year. Phenomenal. But again, it's not what it did in the past. It's what it's saying it's about to do in the future. And again, if all these COVID cases are rising, right? Think about it. If all these COVID cases are rising, and the price action doesn't mirror what's going on. Again, something it's it's pretty basic stuff. Sometimes, sometimes you don't need to be uh, the most you know the, the most ag aggressive and creative and experienced uh, chart analyst. Again, use your eyeballs. If something doesn't go up, it must mean right it goes down. So that's kind of my game plan uh, going Monday. You have obviously vaccine news. Uh, from a Pfizer, you know, there's many that are, uh, you know, uh, Envax, uh, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, uh, AstraZeneca. There's a lot of companies that are still doing these trials. So you can possibly, why these things are weak, you could, you could possibly imagine they're waiting for more positive trials or more positive data. So I think there's a lot of pressure going to these names. So again, I don't know what's going to happen a week from now, a month from now, three, you know, three months from now, all I know is these stocks are not going up with COVID news. So again, my game plan for Monday is I'm going to let these things, especially like a stock like a Zoom, I'm going to let these things play out. Okay, I'm going to let the bear's thesis play out for every opportunity for the bears to succeed. So in other words, if they gap up and they get stuffed into supply, I'm going to start watching those channels to the downside because if they do start confirming macro, again, you know how what, what happened to these things. Uh, we had exactly the same game plan last Tuesday, right? On Tuesday, that second wave push, these things got murdered. So I'm, I'm going to be 
uh, sell bias in these things um, come Monday morning. Again, obviously they need to confirm. Uh, this is just a game plan. We're waiting for it, patiently waiting for the confirmation uh, until that happens. Again, it's not a trade. It's waiting for that setup uh, to confirm. So it's very, very important. Uh, EV names continue to go absolutely bananas. Uh, we talked about them. Well, not to talk about that initially, but uh, we started talking about the other players uh, in the group. Obviously, everybody knows about NIO. NIO. Uh, they are reporting uh, earnings. Let me look at the run NIO has had just from the last, just from June, from 6 to 55. I mean, it's amazing. Big blow off top. I know a lot of people uh, traded it very, very well off that blow off top. Kudos to you guys. Um, but, but, but the kind of the big picture of, of these names, they're not leaving. You know, General Motors, Ford. Um, you know, the Porsche EV is sick, is absolutely sick. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful car. Uh, Tesla's obviously, again, it's very tough in my mind. Um, you know, it's, it's incredibly tough in my mind to compare like a Tesla or a Porsche, uh, you know, electric car to like a Neo or, uh, you know, or, um, you know, what is it called? Uh, or a Nekla, NKLA, or LI. Again, I've never seen these things on the road, okay? These, you know, Tesla is gorgeous. The Porsche EV is gorgeous, right? Beautiful, beautiful cars. Um, so I think there's there's definitely a big disconnect be, 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 you know, between what a stock is doing versus what, 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 a, what a car company is actually producing. And in my area, you, know, you see a lot of the sub suburban areas, also in the tri-state area, there's Teslas everywhere. There are literally Teslas everywhere. And that's the difference, right? That is the difference between a NEO and NECLA or LI compared to a Tesla. So before everybody starts comparing what a NEO uh, versus a Tesla, come on, look on the road. Right? Look on the road. Okay. Neo, again, as far as I understand, it's only being sold in China, might get into Europe. But as of right now, uh, again, you cannot compare uh, an, an orange to a hand grenade. It just doesn't, uh, doesn't make sense. But the plays are working, and you're starting to see anything to do with electric vehicles really spike up. On Friday, you saw GP uh, just start losing. Uh, GP makes like I think, and don't quote me, but this thing exploded on Friday. Look at the volume, right? Had a really, really also big run uh, in August. But I think they make like electric tra uh, tractors or trailers, something like that. So anything you can see, anything with the EV is, is really, really exploding. Uh, we highlighted Fisker on, uh, on Thursday's video. I said this thing has a lot of potential because, again, it's a real car. And I didn't realize, man, they made... A phenomenal looking vehicle uh, back in like 2012. It was gorgeous, man. It's a, it's such a it's such a shame. Uh, you can go on YouTube. You can you can uh, um, you can uh, not on YouTube on um, eBay. eBay Motors. You can see uh, the Fisker what it looked like in 2012. It was gorgeous, man. It looked it really looked like a, a really hot a sports car. Right now it's like tw between 30 and 40 grand uh, that you can pick up on eBay, but really, really beautiful car. And you can see here now macro wise, we talked about this whole channel here uh, broke out, really, really had a big move. And now you're talking about it's getting very, very close macro to if this whole channel confirms uh, this week, then you have room all the way up to the $21, $22 area. So it's something uh, from the big picture. Obviously, I think the NEO earnings uh, coming up this week will have uh, a lot of uh, weight on if these stocks continue uh, to gain further traction or they're going to start get, getting a pullback. We'll see. Again, Neo had a, a really, really big run. Uh, other than that, on uh, other than that, on the macro view, uh, you know, Q's, uh, again, they're, 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 they did a good job. Uh, they rested this week. It was the only one of the indexes that was actually in the red. Half of a percent loss for the week, but that's okay. Again, the most important part is uh, two days in a row on the rest, they are Again, staying above and building above uh, the five-day moving average. If they can reclaim uh, the 292 level, then again, we start getting a pretty good air pocket all the way back to this 297, uh, 298 area. If you look at the SPX, for example, again, they did a great job. They held on to the five-day moving average, which, which we talked about on Friday's, uh, excuse me, on Thursday's video, uh, they reclaimed the previous day's high of 35.62. As long as they stay above the five-day moving average, 35.58, 35.59, again, you have a very, very high probability move uh, to this 36.31 area, which is uh, the upper uh, Bollinger Band. So we are, you know, we are kind of very bullish here, even though, again, a lot of the names 
they don't just jump at you and just scream out bullish. For example, if you look at Amazon, right, it's nestled below uh, the 10 day moving average two days in a row. So that again, that's not great. I, you know, Amazon really needs to reclaim, uh, reclaim this like 3170 area on a close. If you look at NVIDIA, again, NVIDIA is a no man's land, right? You know, you, it, it failed off the top of the range here in the five day moving average, but it held the 522. So we're kind of in no man's land there as well. Uh, Tesla, again, another one, no man's land. You can see that there's a channel right here, the bottom of the channel here held twice. The top of the channel here got rejected twice. Something eventually in Tesla will give. Okay, hopefully it will be this week. But again, you can see there's not really a clear picture. Uh, stock like Netflix, right? Again, same thing here as well. Got rejected at supply, right? Rejected twice at supply. You can see here clear rejection, clear rejection, but held again, rising support of the 50 day moving average. So a lot of the NASDAQ 100 names are really, really kind of the middle of their ranges. They might be out of favor. So if you look at names uh, going into this week, again, you have to kind of use your alternative methods of you know getting and seeking alpha. And that's the most important part, but without, uh, without deviating from your core process. Because again, the last thing you want to do is put on a position for the sake of because of the market's open. Again, we talk about value and nausea. We just don't talk about it. We practice it. And the most important part is to identify where these stocks are. So the majority of these names look like they are in the middle of the ranges. But again, sooner than later, distribution doesn't end forever, right? Uh, something has to get there. Either going to take out the top of the channel or take out the bottom, and at least we'll get our clear macro view. A uh, name like Beyond, and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll talk about the pivot feed in a second. Uh, Beyond, again, got rejected here, re rejected here twice, right at supply. Uh, first close below 125, which is the rising support. I'll show you the pivot here uh, in a second. Uh, but again, this thing looks like, again, if it confirms, uh, you know, if it confirms Friday's price action, uh, again, can we test the, the earnings low? Absolutely. So again, there's a lot of things on the table, but a lot of things on the table need to confirm. Uh, my focal point going into uh, Monday's session is obviously any confirmation to the downside uh, on uh, the stay-at-home names, the Zooms, the Docus. You, can, you know, there's a whole list. D uh, Docu, Zoom, uh, TDOC, Peloton, uh, Chewy, right? Chewy. Even though Chewy actually held up uh, fairly well, you can see here, Chewy did not uh, give back a lot of the gains, um, you know, excuse me, didn't give back a lot of uh, the gains after the, the initial bottom here. It's kind of holding up. The only thing that's holding up Chewy uh, was that PR that uh, Walmart is starting to do, uh, I think, pet delivery. But again, it's 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 a throw, stone throws away from kind of breaking out. It actually held up very well. But that's kind of my initial game plan uh, going into Monday. And again, the most important thing is you have your game plan, you have your thesis, and now we're just ready to wait for it to confirm. Again, we don't, we're not trying to, I'm not looking to sell uh, Zoom at pre-market. I'm not looking to sell it at 931. I need a clear channel. And once it confirms, I will be to definitely the sell bias area. So uh, let's talk about Friday's pivots uh, really quickly. And again, this is how my whole point was, right? Uh, TDOC got upgraded, right? You got you Peloton, Beyonce, sold. Uh, TDOC needs that 192 upgrade. Again, there's a little bit of supply. I said there's a little bit of supply here at 194, so it really needs 194 to reclaim. It never got even close, all right? And this stock got upgraded with a $220 price target. So again, big red flag, sold on an upgrade. Uh, again, I looked at Zoom on both sides, uh, 437 to the upside, 420 to the downside. Again, when you're trading pivots, you don't care which way it triggers, as long as it triggers and confirms the proper way. So here is the 420. Right here is the 420, and they sold it, and this stock got destroyed. It went all the way down to like 398. Really, really aggressive move, and that's kind of my whole point. They're talking about Blasio is talking about the biggest school system in the world possibly being closed, and Zoom gets sold off. Check, check. You know, right? Red signal, red signal. So again. That's my game plan for uh, Monday. CELH, I like this setup, man. I really do. Um, 328033 uh, needs to build. And I still like that area, guys. Um, look at this setup here. So it had this really, really big move, okay? Gave nothing back, gave literally nothing back. Close near the highs. If it can just clear out this whole channel here, everybody see that? Just need this Bollinger Band to go lower. If this thing could clear out this whole channel, this thing's gonna have a next leg up. I really like this thing going into Monday. It didn't uh, confirm for Friday. Uh, Roku didn't confirm. I actually like that one point. Uh, 133 on beyond uh, to the upside never got close to there and then I 
gave a pivot back to the downside. SBE uh, got rejected the same areas again, so I still like this thing. Just just needs to confirm. Uh, crowd never got to 139. Uh, again, you know, ZM first su support is 410. Uh, went all the way down to 396. And again, here's where we talked about beyond uh, 125 held twice. Any close under. Okay, this is kind of more of a macro. Um, macro view but any close under can test earnings low and again here's beyond first close uh, under that 125 you can see it first close under 125 got to like 123 if this 123 loses on monday uh this thing will go lower um netflix big support at 480 for bills below can flush here was netflix uh, gave a move towards the end of the day here. Here's the 480s, right? Here's the 480 flushed down to like 477. But again, it could still go lower. Again, th this is being thrown in and grouped with all these stay-at-home plays. Again, as far as I know, weren't as far as I understand, weren't we using like Netflix way before COVID? Weren't we using Amazon way before COVID? Like, what the hell do they really have to do uh, with COVID? I get it. You stay at home, watch. You know, watch Narcos. I get it. I get it. But come on. Is it really that fair? Um, but again, it's all fair in love and war. It's all fair in the stock market. So uh, there was, this was a sneaky pivot here on CELH. It needs to build uh, 32 it, it, for, for the sellers to clear out. Uh, it got right to, it literally got to, uh, you can see my, my comments here. I go 32.75 now is huge. Take a sale before the cash, take a sale before just for cash flow. That was literally the high of the day. Um, so, you know, it's really, really important to understand uh, where your supply zones are. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up. OK, I'm going to wrap it up. Guys, enjoy your um, rest of your Sunday. Um, I did the worst thing yesterday, just as a kind of closing of factor for all you guys who are over 40 and I'm 46 years old. I was playing basketball against my son. I had point game, right? Point game, baby. I was in it to win it. I was going for a layup. Then I felt my calf explode, literally explode. It felt like somebody shot me in my calf, yada, yada, yada. I strained my calf. Uh, I'm going to see, <laughs> I'm probably going to see a doctor within the next day or two. I got this like copper compressor sleeve on my calf. Oh, just terrible. Again, wrong side of 40. Not every victory is worth winning. Guys, have a great day. I wish everything but nothing but uh, love and happiness and healthiness for everybody. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you on the field tomorrow. Take care.